I'm Microsoft Build Attendees. Thanks for joining me. I'm Sarah Maser with LaunchDarkly. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about LaunchDarkly, show you a demo, and show you some of the integrations that we have with Microsoft. Now, LaunchDarkly is a feature management solution. Our motto is software powers the world. LaunchDarkly helps teams deliver and control their software. And we do that by helping you separate deployments from releases. This helps developers be more productive. No more waiting for a colleague to check in their code. No more developer friction with merging long branches. This gets you more into trunk-based development, CICD, and progressive delivery. So you just plug in one of our 26 different SDKs, which of course being a Microsoft conference, we support .NET and C Sharp. And you plug that into your application and then wrap features inside, in essence, a fancy if statement. Then the rules that determine whether or not someone or something sees that feature is initially built inside LaunchDarkly's user interface but those rules then get downloaded to your application and reside in your application's memory so that any feature evaluation actually happens in near real time in your application. But if you were to make a change within LaunchDarkly to change a rule or toggle a feature, those changes get propagated to your application in about 25 milliseconds or less. We use a modern server sent streaming connection, and that is one of our core competencies to do that so fast, and we do it at scale. So we support 20 trillion feature evaluations a day. So that's with a T, so that's a huge value. And the other cool thing about feature management is that with these rules, they allow you to selectively target people or entities. And so you could target just yourself for testing or your QA team. You could target a segment of a population. So individual customers or people from different states or countries to doing a canary release with a percentage rollout to then rolling it out to everybody. And then what that does is that actually means you can literally test in production. Because you can test safely and securely with LaunchDarkly, it allows you to also reduce a lot of the spending necessary to maintain the lower environments. So you may not need all of your pre-prod staging, QA, dev test environments, um, maybe just a couple. And so that brings everybody uh, a lot of savings, not only in being able to get features out faster, but savings in terms of infrastructure costs as well. So let me show you how this works. And I, I built an actual demo store where you could go and well, not really buy a bunch of LaunchDarkly merchandise. And I got some demo promotions going on and some customer service people monitoring my storefront, ready to chat with website visitors whenever they click on this Facebook Messenger chat button. Oh wait, who am I kidding? Uh, this isn't a real store. I don't have any employees. And now I just showed you my store and uh, there's gonna be a huge demand to click on my chat bot and see all the jokes I have in there. Uh, and my customer service person, which is really me, I'm gonna be totally overwhelmed. Thank goodness I use LaunchDarkly. So let me just kill this chat bot immediately. I'm so glad I didn't have to pause this talk and change my code and redeploy. That would have been really embarrassing. So what you saw was just a simple kill switch example, but you can see the power of being able to quickly react to an incident. Now for all of you who are on call in the middle of the night, it is so stressful to manage incidents. And if you have launched darkly, you can just terminate a feature instead of debugging while you're sleep deprived and having to write code and do redeploys. And if you use one of our 45 different integrations, you could have set up an APM tool and monitor the performance of your system. And if it reaches a particular threshold, you could have it automatically trigger and turn off some non-essential website features. 
and you can continue sleeping throughout the night and just look at the reports in the morning. Now, another thing I can do is change the targeting of my features from the whole world down to a subset of people. So I could turn off that chat bot for everybody except me and see my Facebook friends. So I've got another feature here that's built out more to show you some sample rules. Now rules are evaluated from top down. This beta UI feature, it won't be shown unless somebody else is actually seeing live tiles. So I have prerequisites built into my website. And then I can target myself or my QA team to initially test out the feature. And once my team has QA'd the feature, we could control the rollout to larger and larger segments of the population. Now, if I have VIP users, maybe I don't want to expose them to potentially new buggy software. But on the other hand, like down below, if people have signed up to be beta users and want to test out the software, then I'm going to go ahead and show them the feature. So I can schedule it to go live when my beta period starts. And maybe I want to restrict this to only people in the US for this particular feedback. Now, if they don't match any of the rules, what do I want to do? Do I want to show them this feature, not show them the feature? Or maybe I could start to test the performance of my application. So I could roll it out to 10% or 25%. And Lunch Darkly does our best to make sure that people who end up in that 10% have a same user experience throughout that Canary release. Now, another thing that I'm doing with my website is I'm running an experiment. And LaunchDarkly does ABN testing the developer-friendly way, because you might have people in marketing that have their marketing-oriented tools where they can change the button colors and move things around and run experiments. But what happens is once they've got that experiment complete and their data back, then they have to go over to the developers and say, hey, implement this please permanently because we have the results from our experiment. If you are a LaunchDarkly user, you could control different ways that people see a new feature via variations. And then you'd configure an experiment to run on that feature and use LaunchDarkly to monitor the experiment. And once we reach statistical significance, then you have a winner and you can go and change the percentage rollout of that feature to 100% of that winning value. You're actually done coding. You don't have to go back and change any code. You're done. So let's take a look at what I mean. I've got a coupon experiment running on my demo store. 50% of my demo visitors are seeing one phrasing and 50% are seeing another. So here are two web pages that show the difference. Now, my hypothesis is that people who see the word save are more likely to convert than people who see the word increase. That's, of course, just human nature, but let's play along. So I take my feature flag and I create an experiment with it, with my baseline being increase your trajectory. And I let it run long enough to get statistical significance for a result. And you see, I have a clear winner with p-value of 0 0.0001, a very high statistical significance. And now all I need to do is go back and change my rollout from 50% to 100% and I'm done. Now we're at a Microsoft conference for very smart developers. Some of you have maybe built your own feature management solution but have you integrated with any of the Microsoft tools? Or maybe some of you are hesitant to get started with feature management because you're worried about technical debt. Well, fortunately, LaunchDarkly has you covered. Now we monitor feature evaluations, so we know the feature status at all times, and you can filter by status. In this case, new means a new feature has never been evaluated. Active means it's currently being evaluated by a subset of the population. Launch means that it's on for everybody for a week or more. And inactive means it hasn't been evaluated in a week. 
And so those last two are easy candidates for technical debt cleanup. Now it looks like it's time to clean up a few features, but I'm, you know, I wrote that so long ago, I can't remember where it was used in my code. Fortunately, I use LaunchDarkly and we have code references built in. And so I know exactly where to go. I can see the code snippets, file names, line numbers. So we can even set up a GitHub action to automatically populate code references in LaunchDarkly. So this is the first Microsoft integration that I've mentioned, but we also have a simple Azure DevOps integration that primarily manages Canary releases, um, but your team can also monitor people working within LaunchDarkly and mon monitor feature toggles using our Microsoft Teams integration. And then finally, another thing that I'm going to show you is our LaunchDarkly extension for Visual Studio Code. So as you see here in the lower left, within VS Code, I have an overview of my flags and the flag status. And then I've also turned on Code Lens. So on the right-hand side, you can see the flag status very close to the lines of code. And so that's four integrations that we have with just Microsoft products. We have 41 others for you to check out. So being developer-focused, reliable, secure, and performant is why customers choose LaunchDarkly, including Microsoft, to deliver new features to their customers. And I hope you'll give us a try. Sign up for a free trial at launchdarkly.com. Try out one of our Microsoft integrations or just say hi to us on Twitter. Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference.